for the last month ish, 30, 40 days, we have been sending very valuable daily emails to our newsletter. Things like this. Are your emails getting open, but no one responds? Don't worry, you're not alone. And they go over specific tactics that we've covered in these videos. We have written maybe 150 of these. The goal is to send one a day throughout the week and add a tremendous amount of value to our readers. But I wanna let you in on a little secret. These emails are in my voice. They're extremely personal, and yet I'm not writing them. What's the secret? Do we have a high-priced copywriter blasting these out for $1,000 an email? What if I told you these emails are being written for three emails an hour at $10 an hour. Look at these responses. So someone should create a like button for email so I can press on yours. Hey, I just booked a consulting call based on this email. Hey Alex, thanks for the content you put up. Great read, thanks Alex. Thanks Alex, your advice is pure gold. So people are getting a lot of value from these emails. That wasn't always the case. When we first started with this writer, the emails weren't really in my voice and they weren't as valuable. So in today's video, I wanna show you the process document that we came up with that we sent to the writer to make sure that our newsletter emails are always in my voice and high value so that they're worth reading for our newsletter subscribers. The trick for us is to use our YouTube videos that we already have and turn them into emails. But you could do this same thing with you answering questions over maybe an hour long audio interview a week. And one interview could turn into maybe two months of content if you do this the right way. So here's the process doc. If you want this for free, go over to x27marketing.com slash email process, and you can have this entire doc. So here is our checklist for turning our content into valuable email newsletters. It's 14 points and it looks like, number one, make sure the subject lines are clear as to what the email is about. We've run into this a few times with our list where we have had clickbait subject lines. That's what our copywriter originally wanted to do. Things like, don't open this email. You know, typical email copywriting subject lines. And instead, we want straightforward subject lines. Are your emails getting opened but no one responds? People are gonna open that. The worst cold email I've ever received. Still a little clickbaity, but that's okay. Your cold email was a success. Now what? Very straightforward subject lines, no need for the clickbait here. And I also wanna tell you now that our open rate, since we started doing these emails, has almost doubled, which is pretty great. What we were doing before this was a simple launch sequence where we are raising our coaching prices by $100 per hour per month. And so every week we would send out a case study and tell them that the pricing was gonna increase. We're implementing something similar to that now, but this was the reaction to that. So this is all value, whereas before it was all pitching. And we're gonna find a middle ground soon in the next couple of weeks. So point two, make sure to pick the golden nuggets from the video. So what we found before was our copywriter would grab the first couple sentences or the first 30 seconds of a video and turn that into the email which led to a lot of repetition. I had him going through our cold email teardown videos and that meant the opening was always about the subject line or about the first line of the email, which isn't valuable if you do it a million times. So instead we have him watch the entire video and come up with one or two valuable pieces for the email. And that also leads to us being able to turn one video into sometimes six emails. And number three, don't be aggressive in the email. Just try to add value. Sometimes I think if you take my words and turn them directly into text, it can be a little aggressive, so he softens me up a little bit. And that's why he's adding stuff like, are your emails getting open but no one responds? Don't worry, you're not alone. <laughs> Which is something I would never say, but does soften up the email and text a little bit. Four, make sure the information or examples given in the email are factual and not made up. This was also an issue we were having where he sent us an email draft and it was like, how to use cold email to book a meeting with Tim Ferriss. And I've never booked a meeting with Tim Ferriss using cold email. So we changed that example to Neil Patel, who we have talked to using cold email. And that was key for us because I'm really not a fan of preaching things that I haven't done personally. I don't know if Tim Ferriss responds to cold emails because I've never gotten a meeting with him using cold email, but we have had a meeting with Neil Patel, actually several now. And so that's the example that we want to share. Five, pretty self-explanatory, check for typos. Six, keep in mind that emails are sent as Alex and not the team of X27. So that's avoiding things like we, and instead using I. Everyone on my email newsletter needs to feel like they're getting emails directly from me. And I recommend that for all businesses. If you run an agency, send as the CEO, you know, from the desk of the CEO, things like that. Because even in the B2B space, people wanna hear from other people. They don't wanna hear from a group. 
or a team. It's a lot more effective if it's one person to another person. If the email's getting too big, split it into multiple emails. And this was another thing that we found. We can take one YouTube video, make it six emails, and at the end of every email, be like, be sure to check out the email tomorrow where we cover this in more depth. And that keeps people opening the emails over a longer period of time, which is good because at the end of every email, we're pitching coaching or we're pitching accelerator or we're pitching X27 services. Number eight, don't use acronyms in the emails. I've covered this before in other videos, but if somebody doesn't know what a CTA is, a call to action, writing CTA is gonna get them to delete the email because they don't understand and possibly never read anything you send them ever again. Number nine, make sure that people that haven't seen the video can understand what's going on in the emails. That seems self-explanatory as well, but was something we ran into where the writer would watch the video and then come up with something that maybe referenced something in the video or referenced an image that wasn't in the email. And so we wanted to make sure that the structure of the email was written in a way that didn't require anyone to watch any videos. Our newsletter is a standalone project from us. So you can read the emails and you won't have to watch any YouTube videos. That's where we wanna be. 10, make sure there aren't any repetitions with the content of the email. Meaning if we send an email on acronyms one day, we should not send an email on acronyms the next day or really ever again in the sequence. We're only teaching lessons one time. 11, make sure to use something along the lines of price increases with every purchase. That's specific to the way that we price our coaching, but not really relevant to you. Number 12, make sure to add group coaching or one-on-one -on -one consulting to every email. So whatever the call to action is, make sure to have them in every email. 13, is clarity on who our target market is. So the clients are agency owners, some are consultants, others run social media companies, mobile app development, marketing agencies. So tune those emails and the calls to action in a way that'll help them. This is huge as well. If your writer doesn't know who your target market is, they're going to assume and they will probably be off base. Keeping it clear in the checklist is pretty key. I would even move this up, maybe make it step one, you know, some baseline data that he needs to study before he starts writing. And then 14, update the work in the given sheet. And this sheet has the subject lines of all of our emails in it for Michael, who's our writer, and it has, whether it's edited, the status of the email, the subject lines, the video it's based on, and the name of the email. And it looks like right now we have 79 emails written and they just continue to pour in. So that's our process. That's how we make sure that our newsletter emails are always high value. If you want this doc for free, check out x27.com slash email process. If you found value in this video, I'd love if you would share it with a friend you think would also find value. If you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one in a business consulting situation, go to experiment27.com slash consult. If you want us to manage your email newsletter for your company in a way that drives more leads and gets you more return on your email investment, check out experiment27.com. I'm Alex Berman. Thanks for watching.